Well, hello. Uh, welcome to St. James Cathedral and this pre-concert talk for the Rush Hour concerts put on by the International Music Foundation. I'm Robbie Ellis. I have two guests with me uh, who are playing... Oh, there's, there are the bells. I have two guests with me who are playing in the Deborah Sobel Memorial Concert. Uh, we try to do one of these every year here at the Rush Hour Concert Series. Um, welcoming two guests, immediately to my right is Ken Olson, Assistant Principal Cello of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. He's been in the orchestra since 2005. And beside him, Brant Taylor, or when I say Brant in my accent, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Brant Taylor, also a member of the CSO's cello section since 1998, and a former member of the band Pink Martini, uh, which... I've, I've li I listened to this, some of this stuff before I moved here, and I very much enjoyed it. So, uh, yeah, might, would have had an interesting time. Um, so, uh, how has you both in the CSO? Uh, you've been playing at Ravinia. How's it been getting back up there? Yeah. Um, I think it's been wonderful. Um, I think the orchestra's last summer was the first time that we had played together in so many months uh, after COVID started, and so we had the experience at Ravinia last summer a little bit, but now this summer it feels a bit more normal, if I can dare to use that word. Um, the audience is coming back, and it feels in a, in a good way like, um, you know, the wonderful communication that music has is, is being received by the audience, and I've picnicked myself several times before concerts, and uh, yeah. The before your coming. own concerts. Exactly, oh. yeah. No rosé, just the, just the picnic. Um, Save that for after. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know if you have anything to say about Ravinia. Well, I mean, Ken, I'll ask you, is there anything that you're particularly looking forward to in the rest of the season up there? Uh, up at Ravinia? Well, I think, if I'm being perfectly honest, well, the, the thing that I was most looking forward to, we just did, actually, oh, okay. which was the Bernstein Kaddish Symphony, um, which I really enjoyed that. And that'll be broadcast on PBS, actually, they're hoping before the end of the calendar year, I think. Um, I'm sure there'll be lots of communication about that. But um, I'm, and the other week that I was sort of looking forward to, I always enjoyed when James Conlon was our music director, the operas in the Martin Theater, the Mozart operas. And I'm actually missing that week, which is next week, to be at a chamber music festival out east. So I'm sorry to miss that, but I'm sure they'll be great. So, Yeah, the Ravinia, has, the Ravinia and the CSO and Marin Allsop have done a lot of Bernstein's music in the last couple of years, and of course the Bernstein Mass was on PBS. I can't remember exactly when. Um, yeah, lovely association that they've got up there. Um, so I'm going to move on now to Deborah Sobol, who founded this concert series, the Rush Hour Concerts. Uh, she died in 2014, the age of 63, so not, not particularly old. Um, and this, that was the year before I moved to Chicago. So I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about Debbie, uh, what she was like, and her legacy. Uh, I was lucky to meet Debbie a bit before Ken did, probably in the early 2000s. I forget exactly when, but we met at the home of a, a mutual music-loving friend who used to have chamber music soirees, and I found myself sitting in a room having dinner with this sort of dynamic bubbly woman sitting across the table and um, we just got to talking and as I got to, to know who she was I realized I had seen her perform with the Chicago Chamber Musicians which she was also instrumental in, in founding so Rush Hour was at least the second musical gift that she gave to the city of Chicago uh, on a large scale um, so she asked me not long after that to come and play on this concert series at St. James Cathedral, so I don't know how many concerts of, at Rush Hour I've played in through the years, but it's been quite a few. And Debbie and I, we, we got on well and we enjoyed a, a wonderful friendship that involved me being on the board of Rush Hour eventually and playing together on many of the concerts. And I just, uh, those of you who knew her know that it's impossible to say too many good things about Debbie, she was she enjoy, she was a um, a real lover of life in all of its all of its um, uh, all the ways that you can be, um, food, friends, music, anything that brought people um, together. And I learned from her to take pleasure sometimes in in small things that I might previously have have overlooked. Um, so anyway, it was a it was a 
huge shock to all of us when she left us earlier than we, we hoped she would. Um, but this series is one of, of many ways that, that she lives on. And I, when I, whenever I come into this space, I, I can just, I, I feel her presence maybe more than in any other single space in Chicago, so. Yeah. And uh, she, of course, she was a pianist too, playing on many of these concerts and with Chicago Chamber Musicians. And uh, yeah, Ken, I'll ask you, I think she was a big believer in music being freely available and free concerts being available. I mean, uh, what, play, playing a free concert series like this, do you, uh, what, what's it like being able to bring music to people where there, there is no barrier to entry? No, I think that's great to have series like this. Um, it's not free to produce it. No, no, <laughs> you are getting paid. But um, <laughs> no, I know. But I'm just saying, like, it's you know, it, there's a lot that goes on and a lot of generosity that goes on behind the scenes in order to make this series possible for for everyone to anyone to come in and enjoy. Um, I had my annual physical today, and I invited my doctor to come today. I don't know if he's going to come or not, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> Uh, and when I think of Debbie, I just wanted to add that I just, the words that come to my mind every time I think of her are generous and warm. Like those are like the two strongest words that I think of when I think of her. And I do really appreciate that uh, Rush Hauer has continued her legacy with this program as an annual, uh, just remembrance of celebration of her and everything that she stood for, so. There were, I just want to add, there were a couple of times in, through the years of Rush Hour when discussion of whether to have a, a price of admission came up um, because it would help a lot with certain things. Um, and the, um, the organization has always decided that, no, we want anybody to be able to come in the door of this church. And Debbie had the, she used to use the expression, I want, I want people to be sitting next to each other who come from vastly different social circles in Chicago. Um, and they are able to come here. They're able to be just audience members and enjoy the, the music. So I'm glad that the series has remained, uh, main, remained free. Beautiful. Well, let's move on to the music now in today's concert. It is an all cello concert. And just like in the wider economy, we are going to experience inflation over the course of the concert, going from a duet or a duo. I, somebody needs to get a dictionary out and smack me over the head and remind me which is which. A, from two to three to four cellos. So we, uh, the first piece is by Tanya Anisimova. Uh, she was originally from Russia. She now lives in the US. She is both a cellist and a composer. Have either of you had anything to do with Tanya? Either of you met her? Um, I haven't met her in person. I don't, you haven't either. Um, I heard a recording. It's one of those things that happens in the modern world. I heard <laughs> a recording on YouTube of her playing this piece with uh, another cellist. And this was probably 15 years ago, about the time she wrote it. And so I thought, oh, I really like that piece. And so I, I got her email and I wrote to her and I said, will you send me the music for your piece? And she said, sure. And she sent me the music for her piece. And Ken and I, I've only ever played it with Ken, but we have played it several times together through the years. Um, and I think you'll agree it's, a, it's a, not only a wonderful piece, but a, a unique sound. She writes very well for the cello, but I think she also has sort of a unique compositional voice uh, as well. And she's written a lot of other music for cellos um, because that's her chosen instrument. So um, we've yet to meet, but I yeah. hope to thank her one day in person for this piece because it's, uh, it's really great. Hey, maybe we can get her to this concert series. I don't know. Maybe. Po possibly. Dream big. Let's dream big. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the piece itself. It's called Caravan. Uh, it's by the title, you might think it's got a little bit of a Middle Eastern influence, and I think there's a little bit of one, but it's not, it's not absolutely suffused with uh, Middle Eastern sounds. Uh, anything more you can say about it, either of you? Um, I, I, you said it, uh, one aspect of it well, which is it has a tinge of Middle Eastern flavor, but it's, it's I, I don't even know how to describe it, really, when, I, when I'm asked to describe it. Um, and words often fall short with music anyway, right? Yeah. Um, but what I could say is that it's a, it's a piece that over, sort of sprawls out over maybe 10 minutes in one continuous utterance, but it's, it's broken up into sections that feel sort of like fast, slow, fast, so in the form of a sort of the old concerto style. Um, it has activity with some repose in the middle. Um, and 
She writes in a way for cellos using double stops, which are more than one note at a time um, in an effort to make the piece sound maybe more orchestral. So it has some, some pretty rich sonorities in it. Moving on to the Bach now. Um, and Brad, I'll ask you to, well, actually, we haven't heard from Ken in a while. <laughs> can, I, can, I ask you, can I ask you for a basic primer on the difference between a cello and a viola da gamba? Because Bach oh, originally God. wrote this piece for gamba. First of all, yeah. I'm not playing in the box. I, I'm, I appreciate but that. We just hadn't heard from you in a while. <laughs> a gamba, I, I, Brant, please correct me if I'm wrong. A gamba is sort of the precursor to the cello, right? Like it, the cello sort of evolved out of that. And it was smaller and higher. And it, did it have more strings? Okay, you talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, at the, at well the Bach, time, Bach did write for both violas da gamba and yes. cellos. I mean, of course, the Bach cello suites, uh, you know, the book of Genesis for these two, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but, but moving to the piece that you're about to play, it is originally a sonata for viola da gamba and continuo, which I guess just means rhythm section in Baroque, something like that. Um, this arrangement is for three cellos. Uh, you plus your colleagues, uh, Karen Bazrak and Kantika Klein, will be playing it. Uh, is this the case where one person takes the solo and the other two are backing, or is the lead line distributed? Um, it's a good question. And the piece, the form of the piece actually isn't so much a uh, one line plus continuo. If you look at it on the score, it's three independent lines. One that's played by the gamba, one that's played by the right hand of the piano, and another one that's played by the left hand of the piano. So you can probably see that it, it actually translates really easily to three of any instrument because we just divide the three lines up and each one of us takes an independent line. Um, it's a little bit of a different experience hearing like sounding instruments play the music as opposed to a, a gamba plus a, a keyboard instrument where obviously there's a difference of timbre. But if you look at it, it's, it's why we love Bach. It's why everyone, even jazz players love Bach because it's just independent lines that are all interesting on their own that happen to sound wonderful together. So that's, that's the nature of the, the piece and the arrangement. I really am a fan of multiple cellos in combination, and I don't think there are many instruments that work well with a whole bunch of, you, a whole bunch of identical instruments together. Cello is one, I'd say horn is another. The giant horn ensembles sound great, but um, I mean, you, if you pictured, I don't know, four oboes or four 12, it's, it's not quite, the same blend, and I, I, I think you'll really enjoy the sound of a cello ensemble today. And that brings us to the piece that has four cellos in it, and it's an arrangement of some absolutely divine music, Richard Strauss's four last songs. Um, have, you, have you played these cello quartet arrangements before of the four last songs? No, no, and they're not, they're, they're very good arrangements, I have to say, um, but they're fairly literal with the vocal part. Um, we're playing two, the last two songs of the four last songs. Yeah. Um, and the, I think, you know, part of what you were saying about why cellos and this, I totally agree about the French horn thing. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's always said that cello is the most closest in timbre to the human voice. And the solo lines are written in literally the exact notes that the voice would sing. So, like, of course, four last songs is for soprano and right. orchestra. So you're working. So it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. up there in Sorry. the stratosphere. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the cello has such a huge range. So you get all of the timbres that you need, even with just this one instrument, but by having four of us together. So they're beautiful arrangements and of course everyone knows the songs and they're beautiful songs so i hope we can do them justice <laughs> and and the last question for either of you obviously you've played four last songs in your day job at the chicago symphony orchestra any really memorable performances over your orchestral careers and of these pieces of the four last songs yeah i remember a few but one that i remember very specifically has to do with ravinia actually and it was um Renee Fleming was singing them with us, and that would be a treat in and of itself, regardless of any other factors. But we happened to be, the, the way that the pieces fell on the program and the way that the, the time of year was meant that as the last song was finishing, 
the sun was literally going down in the sky and the golden hour was becoming the blue hour right after sunset. And so basically the, you know, the last two songs really are about, you know, ends of things. Going, going to, to sleep, sleep and sunset. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was, a, it was a moment that I was thinking, you know, pinch me because this music is describing exactly what I'm seeing in the sky. And it was a beautiful, you know, pink, purple sunset at Ravinia. So for me, that was very memorable. I think... So I'm going to put faith that somebody planned that down to the minute. It's like, oh no, we, if we get Renee, then we have to do this piece, which is 22 minutes, not 26 minutes beforehand, because it's going to time with the sunset. And, yeah. Well, I, I really hope you do enjoy the sound of this cello ensemble. Uh, before I let you go, I'll just let you know about a couple of upcoming concerts from the International Music Foundation. Tomorrow's Dame Myra Hess Memorial Concert is at the 17th Church of Christ Scientists. That way, uh, pianist Zhu Wang plays Sh a Schubert Impromptu, something by Louis Moro Gottschalk, uh, Moments from Beijing Opera by Tsang Sao, uh, quite a varied program that'll also be live on Classical WFMT starting at 12.15 tomorrow. And of course, the concert is free and in person. Then, also free and in person, right here next week, same time, same channel, Axiom Brass come along, and they're playing music from Argentina and Brazil. It is heavy on Astor Piazzolla's tangos, but there is also music, uh, also a piece by Liduino Pitombera, commissioned for the ensemble. Some Latin American sounds. I'm very much looking forward to that myself. Uh, but will you please thank uh, Brant Taylor, Brant, Brant, Brant Taylor, Kenneth Olson, and the concert will start in 15 minutes. Welcome to this Rush Hour concert in St. James Cathedral, put on by the International Music Foundation. I'm Robbie Ellis. This concert, as I said, presented by the International Music Foundation, is grateful for support from the Clare Rush Hour Concert's exclusive media sponsor, as well as the National Endowment for the Arts and the Illinois Arts Council. There's a slight change in your printed program, a slight change in personnel. The second piece, the Bach, will feature cellists uh, Brant Taylor, Karen Bazrak, and Katinka Klein. Uh, later on, you will hear from Karen and Katinka, but to begin, please welcome cellists Brant Taylor and Ken Olson.
Thank you.